Right, so this is the story then, with my wheel. So, last weekend, we was down here. I'm back in Wales now. We're down here at the Sick Pulse so Lodge, doing our Ellen Valley weekend. And on the way, as we got off the M54 to join the A5, Goose was behind me, and he says, your back wheel doesn't look right. I couldn't feel anything or notice anything, so I thought nothing of it. Uh, we did the weekend. Went out on the road down to Ellen Valley, and on the way back, Nathan Oban was behind me. And he came to the one side of... Because obviously I've got the single-sided swing arm. He came to the one side, and he says, your back wheel looks knackered. Looks like it's loose. So we got back, uh, put the bike on the centre stand, and obviously the wheel was wobbling. So I've got a bit of footage of the wheel when I got home. I videoed the wheel, and um, the wheel was it was all over the place. Now I can't say I noticed anything whilst riding. I couldn't really feel it. I don't recall going over any major pothole or anything. You know, what's made me think, Jesus, that was a big bump. So nothing stands out. So I had the bike in September, so unless the wheel was like it in September, I don't know. But I couldn't feel anything. Um, speaking a lot with Sean Tinsley, because um, he had the cross tourer, uh, going through checking the bearings and the hub and things like that. There was no play whatsoever in the wheel. The wheel wasn't moving. Um, but I found a place called SFX Wheels, right up by uh, where Goose lives, about three miles from Goose. And what we did, there you go, there's the ball. Thank you. So, um, yeah, on the way back, um, I contacted SFX, uh, I think the guy's name Paul, um, really helpful. And he just says, yeah, drop the wheel into me. So I took the wheel to work, um, Goose dropped it off. Um, he put it on, he's got some kind of a gauge, which checks how true the rim is, I suppose. So there's a bit of footage of that he sent me, so this is the footage of that. And it's quite, to be honest with you, it's quite bad how bad the wheel is. Um, but he messaged me... What are we on now? It's Monday. He messaged me Saturday morning and he says, yeah, it's all done. 30 quid. So he sorted out the spokes on it. So I think a few of the spokes was loose. So 30 quid, you can't complain at that. So on the way back from here, tomorrow, uh, I've got to go past his place by the M54. So I'm going to pick the wheel up, get back, put the wheel on. Then I'm going to go out on the bike and see if there is any difference. Because whether there was something there and I'd got used to it on the bike without noticing it. So I'm just wondering if the bike will be different now. But I think what I might do is, just before we go to Switzerland in July, I might take him the front wheel um, and get the spokes checked on that. You know, for 30 quid, it's, it's nothing just to check the wheel. So hopefully it's all sorted. So thank you, Paul, at SFX Wheels. Uh, I'll try and get some footage of your place when I come and pick the wheel up tomorrow. So that's it. That's my wheel fixed. So there was me, th expected it to be about three or four hundred quid, thinking I need a hub, I need a new rim. So, it just shows you, find the right person who knows what he's doing, and it cost me 30 quid. So, I'm sorted. Anyhow, we'll try the bike out on the road, see if it is sorted. So I'll probably add some footage to it of me on the bike. So here we go. This is SFX wheels. What are they? Paul? Craig? That's the one by the look of it. <laughs> How was it then? Was it bad? Yeah. I had a right, we've just done about it anymore, man. I had a right, yeah, it's fucking old, isn't it? Normally, we use something like that. Yeah. And it's fucking bolted in. But I've got this other gadget. And I sort of made a thick to sort of bolt it to that, but I couldn't get it to quite. So what I've ended up doing, I've ended up measuring it. <laughs> I'll show you how I've done it. So, I've slacked everything completely off. And I've gone round it with that gap there. Oh, right, yeah. With that gap. There, look, yeah? Yeah. So I'm measuring that. And that's my sheet. 
So the first time I did it on the front, it was three, two, 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 three, 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 all the way around. And on the back with that, it was dead on. <laughs> so that means the rim's a bit bent. So I had a mess with it and sort of evened it out a bit. And then the front measures that. Ah, so you sort of do 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Yeah. Well, that's all I wonder if... I'll give it a try on the bike. Yeah, we know. I wonder if it was like it when I had it. I said I only had the bike in September or... So I don't remember giving it or hitting anything. Because no. the MOT tolerance is quite a bit. Yeah. It's plus or minus a mil and a half. In well, that's brilliant. I'll try that. <laughs> much and I'll, uh, I'll see you with the front wheel soon. <laughs> nice one. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, buddy. See ya. <coughs> there we go it's done so all we can do now is put it on the bike and try it out right then the moment of truth i've put the wheel back on i've torqued up the wheel nuts so let's try it out On the road. Right, the back wheel's on. Let's go and uh, let's go and try it out. Let's put on this 360, and I think what I might do with that as well. Is it recording? Yeah, I might try and angle it down to see if I can see the back wheel. So we're gonna have a go first, just to see what it feels like. As I said, I didn't notice before that it was buckled, so I'm not expecting to notice anything more. So it don't feel any different at the moment. Oh, it's definitely mesh jacket weather. 18 degrees. Try it on the dual carriageway. I so said I don't know what the outcome would be if the wheel was badly buckled and Goose and Oban never noticed if I just carried on riding it. I don't know whether it does any damage to the wheel. I suppose it depends on how bad the buckle is. So that's something else I've got to keep checking out. I've got to keep checking that 360 still there. And it didn't fall off. It feels alright. I don't feel like I've got any vibration or wobbling, or the back end feels funny. So it feels fine at low speed. 
I'm just wondering with a buckled wheel, when you go so fast, do you ride through the oscillation of it? Or does it get worse at a certain speed? I wonder if it's any different braking, just with the rear brake. I'll try that actually. See if I can feel anything. Let's just use the rear brake. No, it feels alright. So what we'll do, there's a car park up here. I'll take it on the car park and I'll put it on the centre stand. Okay then. Well the back tyre's a lot better. That was all over the place. Still a little bit in the rim. But I don't think that's too bad. I think I'll be alright with that. Right, let's try this 360 in a different position. Right. Warm today. 
it ain't off form. Okay, let's give it a whirl. can't feel anything it doesn't seem to be affecting the road so I'm happy with it maybe after Switzerland it's do I look at another wheel I don't know I'll see see if it feels fine on corners Yeah, feels fine at speed as well. I mean, it's quite windy today. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to leave it as it is. It's not affecting the ride. It's not bothering me. So if you want to let me know your thoughts and comments, what would you do in my situation? I'm about 400 quid second hand the back wheel. I ain't got 400 quid. So it's either the back wheel or it's a Swiss Alps. I can't afford to do the two. What would you do in my situation? It's not affecting the road. It's a lot better than what it was. I'm going to stick with this, I think. Unless something happens between now and the Swiss Alps and something changes, I'm going to stick with it how it is. Right then, let's get back. I'll see you on the next video I can't do an oosh because I've got both hands on the bars I'm doing the clutch and that's what also just pretend I'm doing an oosh oosh <laughs>